Hello my friends and welcome to today's video. I'm Jeanette with Vivo Vintage Designs. Before we get started with this video, I want to apologize for the lighting. I am still working in my kitchen, still can't make it down to my studio, so I'm trying to make the best of things, so I hope that you understand. So in today's video, um, I'm going to show you how to create some of these flowers. I posted this painting in my Facebook group, Vivo Vintage Design Tutorials, and you all loved it and had a lot of questions, and it was requested that I um, show you how I created some of these flowers. So that's what we're going to do today. And I just got some new fine liners. I ordered them yesterday because the ones that I had were all dead on me. And I haven't tried these yet, but I paid $10 for 12 markers. So I'm curious to see uh, how they work. And I'm going to be working on printer paper and I've cut a few pieces in half and into quarters. Um, you can do this on photo paper and then use alcohol ink markers, which I will be using as well, to um, add some color. But for me, right now, it's just easier to use the uh, printer paper, so that's what I am going to do. And I'm going to show you how to do a leaf, how to create this flower, and this flower here. And if you're interested in seeing how I created the others, let me know in the comments below. And before we get started, I'm going to remind you that all the products will be listed in the description box just below the video. I'm going to be using these um, alcohol ink markers. These are pastels, and I did buy these on Amazon, and they have a really pretty selection of pastel colors. Okay, so for this, you're going to need some alcohol ink markers, some fine liners, um, photo paper, or whatever paper you use for your inks or alcohol ink markers, and a pencil. All right, so here we go. I think I will show you this flower first. I did do this, I didn't color this one in. I left it black and white, but I'm going to show you how to create this flower. So I'm gonna bring you closer so that you can see when I start the center, I'll bring you closer. So the first thing you want to do is you want to create a guide. So we're going to draw a smaller circle in the center, and that's going to be the center of our flower. And then we're going to draw a larger circle, and that's going to be the size of our petals. And of course you can make them as big or as small as you like. And now I'm going to grab, um, let's see, a size 8 and then a size 2. The size 8 has a larger nib, the size um, 2 has a smaller nib. So we're going to use the size 2 to create the lines, the details, but um, we're going to use the broader tip to create the petals and the outline. All right, so first we're going to start with the size two, and I'm going to bring you closer so that you can see how I created this center. Uh, let me bring you a little bit closer. Okay. So for this center, all I did was create double loops, and they're in the shape of a teardrop. So I start with a loop, and then I make a smaller loop inside of it. They don't have to be perfect. And then just fill in the areas. They can be different sizes. And you can see it's really simple. Just draw your first loop and then come back into it with a second one. And any spaces that you have in between that don't have, well, I'll show you, we'll, I'll, we'll come back to that. See here, there's this little area here. Fill that in in black. If you have any white space in between your loops, fill it in with the black. Okay, so now that I've got all my little loops, I'm going to go in and fill in all those little white spaces in between. I 
think I got them all. Okay. So now that we've got that done, I'm going to bring you back out. Oops. And we're going to start drawing our petals. And for the petals, again, you can make this as big as you want also. It doesn't have to, you know, there's no specific size that it has to be. Now I'm going to use the size 8 liner. And for the petals, I like to make them narrow at the base and then wider in the center. And then I taper them off at the end. So you can use a pencil to draw a guide. And then I like to make the tips of the petals all different. I don't want them all to be the same. Okay, so now we have our petals in, and now we want to create these veins, these darker veins within each petal. And in some I have one, two, or three of these, so it doesn't matter. Whatever you like to do, I like to make them each one different. So I'm just going to add these lines. Okay, so now we have those lines in. We're going to take the size two and we're going to start creating these fine little lines in each of these sections. And the best advice I can give you is that when you're starting your line, start from the base and find a center point and make sure that all your lines come from that point so that you can keep track. So you see I'm going back to that set, that point and adding in my lines. And you definitely want to use a marker for these lines that is thinner than the marker you used for the outline and those center veins. And just take your time and try and follow the shape of each section. And it's nice to change things up a little bit and add the lines closer together in some of these sections and further apart in others. And as you go along, you'll find your rhythm. Again, I see I have a point at the top that I keep coming to, and then one at the bottom. And of course, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can end it in the middle of the petal, whatever you like. Now, you can see some of these, this size 8 marker is not thick enough to make these lines and the outline stand out. So you can use a broader tip marker or you can just go over the lines again. So I'm going to finish off one more petal. Let me outline this one also because I want you to see um, when I add the color how it looks. And I definitely want these lines to stand out. Okay, so we'll do one more petal here. Okay, so you get the basic idea. It's very simple. It's just a bunch of lines and making sure that your outline and the center veins are a broader tip than the smaller lines that you're doing. Now to um, fill this in, I'm going, I did purchase these um, alcohol ink markers at five below. So I do have some of these that I really like the colors. So I'm going to use them to fill in, but use whatever you have, it doesn't matter but I really like this yellow, it's nice and bright. And I'm seeing that some of these markers are kind of, the fine line markers, they are um, smudging a little bit. Maybe that wasn't dry enough because these, these didn't smudge. Yeah, I think that just wasn't dry enough. 
So for the price, this was a good deal, I think. So far, so good. Okay, so now we've added the yellow to the leaves. And now we're going to pick a color that's just a little bit different. And it can be a darker yellow or maybe a little bit of, um, I'm not sure what color this is, but it's kind of like a brownish color. So from the base of the petal, I am going to flick my wrist and bring up some of this color. And then from the tip of the leaf uh, petal, I'm going to do the same. And you can see how that kind of adds a little depth to the petal. It makes it look like it's um, like it has a like it's curled over. And if you find that the color you've chosen is too dark, because I think that was too dark, I meant to choose another one. You can just go over the yellow area again, darken that up a little bit and that will kind of blend in a little bit more. So that is how you create that flower. And then for the center, you can add, um, what color did I use? I think I used an orangey color. Um, I don't think I have that here. Let's use this one. So I'm not, I'm leaving some white areas. I'm just, doing a couple little skippy lines here and there. And then I'm going to change it out to a different color as well, just to add a little bit of depth. I'm not even sure that this is a, well, it's hard to see the difference in these colors, but hopefully you get the idea. Using two different colors is nice because it gives it a little bit more depth. So that is how we create that flower. Now let's move on to um, one of the, the leaf, I really like the leaves. They um, help fill in space in between flowers because if you have a lot of white space, you gotta use a marker to fill that in. So uh, let's go to the size eight. And oops, first of all, let's draw a guide. So we're just going to draw the basic shape of a leaf. We're going to give it a center vein actually like the way this looks this way better <laughs> and we're going to use the size eight to outline it and I'm going to show you two different ways okay so you can do a smooth edge to it or I like the serrated edge and all you're going to do is just add a little point here and there as you bring your marker down to the side of the leaf and then we're going to add our center vein and the little veins that branch off of that. And I think I'm going to see if I have a marker with a smaller nib. I do. This is a size one. And now to create the shading, we're going to create these little lines and I want you to flick your wrist while you're doing these. You don't want to draw a straight line like this. You don't want lines like that because what happens is your edge, your ends are blunt and what you want is this kind of look where your the tips of your lines are tapered. If I do this, you can see they're pretty blunt. It's not the same. So you want to flick. I hope that makes sense. All right, so let's start flicking our little marker. So as I get towards the center, I want to make my lines a little longer. And then I will start to taper them in again. And I like to go back and add some longer ones here and there. I don't want it to look too uniform. And then we're going to do the other side. So you're going to do the same around the edge and you want these lines to be going in the same direction 
here and here. So let's start creating these little lines. And again, you're going to want them smaller towards the tip of each side of the petal. And then you want them a little bit longer as you get towards the center of the leaf. So I'm only going to do one side, but I want to show you how you shade this and how pretty it looks. So I'm going to choose this very pale green, or rather lime, kind of limey green. And I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. And because later on you will be doing the background in black, don't worry if you go outside the lines. It's okay. All right, so I've done one side. Now, if you don't have a variety of markers or a darker marker than this green, what you can do is use the same color and just flick in the center over your lines. And you can see that it darkens that green where you go over it. So you don't have to use a different color. You can just use the same color. And again, go back and add some longer lines here and there. And then, and then do the same on the edge. And what this does is it makes the leaf look like it's got a little curve to it as well. So you don't have to use a different color. You can use the same color. Or you, know, you can use a different shade, a darker shade. So that's how the leaf is done. And then you can see what I've done to my table here. Um, the second flower I wanted to show you how to create is this one here. And it kind of looks like a marigold. And it's really simple. So we're going to let me flip this over. Okay, we're going to start again with a guide. So we're going to do the center of our flower. And I'm trying to see if I'm still in frame here. I think so. <laughs> and then we're going to draw a guide for the outside petals. Now for the center of this one, I'm going to use the size one again. And this center was really, really simple. I just did the loops without the second loop inside of it. So I just did this almost like doing a flower. And I just went around until I filled in the area with these little loops. And that's all there is to it. Ow. And then to create the petals, I'm going to switch to the size eight and this again is very simple. You want your petals to taper at the uh, bottom and you want them a little bit broader at the top. So you're going to start your line, come up, wiggle your pen a little bit and come back down. They don't have to touch. So taper it at the bottom, wiggle a little bit and taper it again. Okay, so now we have our flower. And if you feel that it's not even, just add another petal somewhere to make it more rounded. Okay, so now, now that you have your petals drawn, go back to your smaller nib uh, fine liner. And what you're going to do is, again, you're gonna flick some little lines in the center coming from the base of each of these, each of these little petals and what that does is it gives it a little bit more depth, a little shading down there. They don't have to be long. You want to keep them kind of short 
because you're going to be adding them to each one of these little petals. So you don't want them to be too long. Okay, I think that's enough. To fill in the petals, just use your marker, fill them in. So now that we've got that, I'm going to switch to a darker kind of orangey marker. And those little lines that I did earlier, I am just going to tap in a little bit of this orange just to add a little bit more detail and make it look like those petals are kind of concaved into the uh, center. It just gives it a little bit more depth and texture and just makes it much more interesting. I think it looks flat unless you add this kind of shading. So this is really, really simple to do. And once you start doing it, you kind of get lost in what you're doing and it's just so relaxing. I don't find this daunting at all. I love doing this. This is my favorite type of therapy. It's just very, very relaxing. And now for your center, again, I would choose two colors that are a little bit different from each other. So here I have um, a light yellow and this kind of brownish color. So I'm going to start by filling in mostly with the yellow. And then maybe, no, that's the same color. I'm going to just here and there add a little bit of the darker color. Again, because it just gives it more detail, a little bit more depth. And that is it. So we've created kind of like a marigold, the leaf. And I'm not sure what kind of flower this is, but put these all together and you can create something beautiful like this. I really enjoyed doing this piece. I thought it was pretty when it was just black and white, but then when I added the color, I thought it was fantastic. Now this flower here, for, for an added bonus, this flower here is really simple. It's basically the same thing as this, only I squared off the tips of the petals. And then for the center, I just did, let me bring it closer, a bunch of little circles, bigger circles, and then I filled in the area in between with black. And then when I added the color, as I did with the others, I just added um, different shades of uh, similar colors. And for the petals, I'll show you really quickly how I did the petal. And I wanna show you one more thing too. All right, let me grab one of, the, one of this paper here and I'll show you how I did those petals. So we're going to um, size eight. So let's pretend that this is the center and we've done all those little circles. So the petals are just squared at the top. Can add a little line in there and then just fill it up with these kind of squared little petals. You can add a little crack in them. And then to add the lines, just do those sketchy, skippy little lines that I do all the time. You can come from the top as well. And of course, fill in your flower. <laughs> and then add your little lines. And that's all that there is to creating those petals. So, all right, now I'm finished. Oh no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm so bad. All right, so I wanted to show you, when you do it on white paper and you add the color, it really doesn't stand out very much. I'm gonna put a piece of paper underneath here because I don't want it to go through to my table. But once you add the black to the background, it really makes the flower pop. And I'm just using this broad, the broad tip of this alcohol ink marker. 
which I wish I had when I was doing those other paintings because I used a very small nib fine liner to fill in um, the black on this and this and this and it took forever. So having um, a marker like this with a broad tip really uh, helps the process go by a lot faster. So you can see as I'm outlining this how immediately the petals jump out as opposed to just being on the white paper. You know me and my black backgrounds, I love them. I think that it makes everything stand out so much better. So you can see immediately that the petals jump out at you. And if you like, in between these petals here, you can add a little bit of black, just to add a little bit of more depth, just in between here at the base of the petals. And that's it. All right, now I'm really finished. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions regarding anything you've seen me do here, please do leave your question in the comments. I will always get back to you. I want to thank you for watching, and I want to remind you to please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your interaction is very helpful to my channel, and most importantly, it's a really nice way to show your support. I really do appreciate it. And don't forget to check the description box for links to the products used. I will link these markers. They're really pretty. They have some gorgeous pastel colors. Let me show you the colors real quick, just in case you're interested in purchasing them for yourself. They were not expensive, but the colors are really nice. And I will also um, list these in the description box. They're by two hands. And so far, this is the first... Um, try at using them they are it says waterproof um, I wonder if these are alcohol based that's a good question to ask because if they're alcohol based they're not great no they're water based so that's good because when you go over it with the alcohol ink markers it won't smudge it shouldn't smudge it smudged before because I don't think it was dry yet but anyway, all this will be linked in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.